I'm Holly. And I'm Bridget. And this is Girls Next Level. (laughs) Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. We are picking up where we left off on season two of Girls Next Door, episode seven, Sleepwear Optional, where we throw a slumber party for one of our favorite playmates of the year, Cara Monaco. And this episode, last episode, we talked about the first half of this Girls Next Door episode, and the theme was jealousy, which actually carries through this whole episode. But also when I'm watching this episode, another theme I was thinking of is like female friendships and loneliness because I saw or was reminded of a lot of that in this episode there's you know the scene where you're checking in on Kendra and Monica and there's tension there's Kara leaving which was really emotional and sad and kind of feeling like you're losing a friend because she's going to be going off and you know doing all this stuff for the next year and she won't really be home and I wanted to ask you like are female friendships a necessity to you and has that been like consistent your whole life I think female friendships are very important Mm -hmm. and um and I I always valued them so much at the mansion yeah like I loved that Kara was there I loved that Crystal was around I loved Stacy coming over like I loved all the girls I mean we made such great friendships with so Mm -hmm. many people and I don't know what I would have done without all of that a hundred percent I feel like for me too like female friendships have always been through every phase in my life indispensable like do I look back at different phases and be like oh the couple female friends I had really sucked and didn't have my back (laughs) maybe but I always felt like throughout every phase in my life you know I'm not the most social person or anything I'm super awkward but I always felt like I always gravitated toward having at least a handful of female friends like it's just a necessity even now it's just like who else would you like talk to or vent to and I know you know gender is more fluid than just male female but stereotypically like a lot of men don't really understand the nuances that you want to talk about as a woman all the time or care (laughs) yeah or care or like what the hell are you talking about yeah but I feel like it's such a thing and I feel like one of the things that was hard for me in the latter half of living at the mansion is we were surrounded by so many great fun people but I was restricted from hanging out with those girls very much because I always had to be at half side 24 7 yeah except the few hours I was allowed not to be and you'll see in this episode I can't even stay at a childish slumber party that we're having across the street well it even restricted how much time we got to spend together Mm -hmm. if you were in my room too much and Hef wanted to watch something he would come in and drag you out and be like what are you doing when you coming back let's go like what why are you in here yeah exactly so those outside female friendships from the playmates and like I was saying Crystal and Stacey and stuff were like so important so important And there's a thing, speaking of you and I not getting enough time, there's a thing we're going to talk about coming up when we get to the Europe episodes, like a big thing that happened with you that I wasn't even aware of until years later. And I was like, how could I have not been aware of something that big? Like, obviously, I wasn't present for it the moment it happened. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm like, how did we not talk about that? But I think the reason why was because when we were on that Europe trip, we didn't have any one-on-one time. I was always right next to Hef. It was all of us as a group. It wasn't just like me and you jaunty off doing something. Yeah, very little. Well, we did do one thing, but... What was that? I forgot. Disney... Like Euro Disney Paris. Oh Disney yeah, Paris. we did kind of get to go by ourselves. Was that before the thing happened though? I'm trying to figure out what day. We need to look at our schedule. Th- we'll get to it when we're on the Europe episode. But. I think it happens the next day. Oh, so that's why I wouldn't have known is obviously, you know, you're not going to talk about it around the people that it happened with. Yeah, it's crazy because I felt like, and I know we're getting into it in the next mm-hmm. episode, but I felt like everyone knew, like everybody in security, Whoa. everybody in PR, everyone, everybody knew what Damn. happened. That's how I felt anyway. I wish somebody from Playboy PR that we worked with really closely would come on the show at some point because I feel like they'd have a lot to say about a lot of things. Yeah, I wonder if they would. I know. That'd be so good. I'm talking to them so I could I could ask. Speaking of female friendships, have you ever been stabbed in the back by a female friend? Of course. God, I mean, it's a nightmare. And I feel like when I think about female friendships that have gone completely awry, it makes me think about people like, say one of Hef's friends who's like super loyal and just doesn't understand how I could go from like being super in love with Hef and super like into him to like seemingly the next day from their perspective being super anti yeah 
And I can't really think of any way to explain that to someone who doesn't understand it other than comparing it to like, and I don't know if this guy would be able to relate because I don't know if he, men have these kinds of things happen in friendships as much. But it may, it reminds me of like when you have a close female friendship and all of a sudden you find out that that female has been like talking shit about you starting problems between you and somebody else they've been lying and it usually sometimes it takes a couple times of that being revealed to you for you to accept it but once you realize that and you see that you see that person totally differently it's like a mind f and then you have to go through your head and be like everything that person ever told me that i assumed was true now i can't i have to like erase that from my mind because they could have been lying the whole time yeah and it's such a mind and that's how I felt about Hef. Like when I finally got knocked into my head, how he was playing us against each other, et cetera, et cetera. I just saw him so completely differently. Like when I was asking for Q&A questions the other day, this is one I get kind of regularly. If you could say anything to Hef now, what would you say? I'm like, I don't have anything I want to say. Like I think of him, even if he was still alive, I don't feel like that's the same person I thought I was in a relationship with. Yeah. Like what would I say? Haha, you're fake. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So it kind of reminds me of that dynamic a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I know I said it at the top of the last episode, but this episode is kind of has two contrasts to me. Like there's the really supporting mm -hmm. other women and like female friendships and the strong bonds that we had there. And that's the part that I love about this episode yeah. is that you get a little glimpse. I don't think they do a good job on it, but mm -hmm. you get a little glimpse onto what that was like and, and how far we were willing to go for somebody. And then you also see the opposite side of that. You see somebody who doesn't want to participate, doesn't want to be supportive. And and even further than that, and like with the Monica thing, doesn't even want me around in yeah. the, you know, or probably either of us around mm -hmm. in her friendship with things. And it's hurtful. Yeah, it really captures. I feel like this show, and one of the reasons it's interesting for us to talk about it, is it, this show is just so layered. Like there's what they were trying to put over in the very beginning. There's what was really going on. There was like the dark side to it. But it's almost like the show was capturing even more than they knew. Yeah. Because they didn't, I, I know Kevin wasn't thinking about this as like, oh, let's show people really, try I mean, they do show the contrast, but I don't think anybody took it seriously that like we're here trying to do this thing for Kara and Kendra's just shitting on it. Yeah. But it really captures it. It really does. And I think that they keep showing it because mm -hmm. like in this next scene it shows at the back of the mansion and you and I are in my room and we're sitting on the floor and ho you're eating something and I'm keep trying to keep Winnie away yeah. from like trying to eat your snack and in interview you say that you feel like you see a lot less of Kendra now that Monica is here because they're always off doing something during the day but I feel like that's something they fully I don't feel like I know that's something they asked me to say I don't see less of Kendra like when Kendra was new, we really tried to include her, invite her to everything we were doing. But after a while, it became pretty clear that we wanted to go do different things during the day. So we weren't really hanging out during the day. Like I wouldn't have randomly seen Kendra more with Monica. Not th like it doesn't matter if Monica or if another one of her friend is there. Like we wouldn't have been hanging out during the day, really. Yeah. And I feel like this is the show. They saw this with Destiny and they mm -hmm. didn't really like dive into it. They just kind of showed it for what mm -hmm. it was. But I feel like this is the show going, oh, wait. There's, there's something here. Yeah. We need to like focus on this a little bit and make the, them talk about it and see what's mm -hmm. going on here. And they show Kendra and Monica jumping on the trampoline together. And it said, you say, I feel like when Kendra attaches herself to somebody, it's like, okay, it's me and her and we're going to do our own thing. And I'm just like, whatever. And I, I feel like that's becoming such a thing with her to pull away. It's part of her identity mm -hmm. yeah. is to like do that. Yeah. You know, like that. And the show is just catching on to that. So they're trying to like show it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they are trying to show it in a way that they, like you said before, trying to make it Kendra's cool. Yeah, cute and mm -hmm. fun. So then the next scene is we're off to the Playmate house and you're on a cell phone. Yes, a oh, flip phone. I love to point it out when Call I see them. me on my flip phone. <laughs> yeah, because you're right, because they're slowly making their infiltration into yeah. their world and yeah. our day-to-day -day life. When the show first started, we didn't really have them. No. And now they're like starting to pop up. And you say, can I speak with Kendra, please? And also, I want to point out that the show liked us to call the butlers when we're calling on the show because it says who we're, then we say who mm -hmm. we're calling instead of just calling and, and 
not saying. And you say, I tried to call Kendra to see if she wanted to come over and help, but I didn't get a hold of her. And there's a couple of things here. But the one thing I wanted to point out was that it's, again, us trying to include her, though. Always. Even though yeah. she, we know she doesn't want to be a part of it, we're still trying to make her feel included mm-hmm. and like that this party is coming from her too. Like we're all doing this for Kara and she just doesn't want to be. So, and then the next scene, they show Kendra and Monica sunbathing. Kendra takes her top off and Kendra says, I like the fact that Bridget and Holly like to decorate and set up because when it comes to like blowing up balloons and doing all that girly stuff, you can count me out. And this goes back to me to the first scene. Like I can, I get when you're not into something, but you can't even like pretend for a little while or like it because somebody else likes it. So even though it's not your thing, you're just going to be there for that other person. Or what about just helping out, helping yeah. other people out? Can't be bothered. Like you say in the first um, episode, I didn't mention it, but you say, I'm so glad that you came over and helped me with this because I would have been here for five hours yeah. if you didn't. Well, imagine if another person was helping too, like yeah, how totally. much faster things can go. So like just even just to help help out and this whole attitude is very it's very season two to me because in season one like as you guys know if you've listened through our season one anytime we talk about the dynamic with Kendra it's more on the producers like the Mm -hmm. producers are doing this the producers are doing this differently she's getting a different cut because blah 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 it's not on her I feel like we were all pretty supportive of each other in season one yeah but something changed in between season one and season two and I feel like a huge theme of this season from her making sure we weren't invited when she was getting her grill to not wanting to making a big fuss over not wanting to do our things to Mm -hmm. scene stealing there was like a weird attitude shift yes and I don't know where it was coming from I think you would have to look into areas of her life that we weren't a part of to see where it was coming from I don't know if she'd already started working with that manager in San Diego and maybe he was blowing her up like I don't know if she was getting a big head I don't know what it was yeah so now we're back at the playmate house everything is decorated balloons are blown up the Um, balloons look cool on the ceiling i like it yeah i like it too Uh and you say i was gonna invite kendra over but we're pretty much done and you say thanks for the help everybody because it's clear that there's other people over there helping Mm -hmm. too now like crystal and stuff and then they take us away on the dandelions so cute or the bubbles or whatever and that little thing so the next scene we're gathered in the dining room ready to leave and hef said who's missing And I can see it on his face because I know him so well. He's over it at this point. It's just like in the Easter episode and with the dog birthday party. Like he's finally annoyed with Kendra for being late instead of like mad at me for Kendra being late. And I genuinely feel watching these episodes back. I didn't really think of it at the time, but watching the episodes back, seeing the looks on his face, I genuinely think he was like over Kendra at this point. And if it hadn't been for the show and for her personality working on the show, I feel like he would have been like, You know, if it's time for you to leave, you can go ahead and leave. Like, I feel like he would have been over it. That's interesting. I'm 100% convinced. Because he's getting annoyed and pissed. Like, he's not thinking it's cute and funny and amusing that she's not showing up to stuff or not wanting to do stuff. I can see him getting annoyed in some of these scenes, but I also feel like he just tolerates it. And I guess it's for the show. It's for the show, 100%. And in an interview, Kendra says, when all the girls were waiting downstairs, I kind of figured that they were going to be all dressed up and stuff like that because it was important to dress up for Kara. But it's important also to dress up for the Lakers. And I feel like that line just says so much. All she's saying is she doesn't give a fuck about Kara or that it's Kara's day. Well, and she's putting it into her own head that we're all dressed up for and and we should be for Mm -hmm. Kara. But she's not going to do it. And she throws a Lakers t-shirt down and sighs. And she like throws it down and she like sighs like she's just really being, you know, pushed and like doing something she just can't stand. And I put in my notes because it's just so awful that she has to get paid to go out to a fancy dinner with Hef and a bunch of playmates. And I mean, how could we be so mean to her? It's awful. It's like waterboarding. (laughs) 
correct. <laughs> so then the next scene, we're back in the dining room. Monica comes, Monica comes down and she's hugging and saying hello Wait, to everyone. Did you notice when Monica's following Kendra down the stairs in the Great Hall? I don't know if she has really high heels on or what, but she's yes! hanging onto the railing for dear life. Like she's descending Mount Everest. Yes, <laughs> so I have that in my notes in a minute here. But <laughs> Monica goes upstairs to get her and Kendra says, do I look okay? So it's all in her head mm-hmm. that she is not dressed appropriately for this. Nobody has said Nobody's a word telling, to her. Yeah, nobody's saying anything. Nobody does anything later in the scene. But she already has a complex. So she's asking her, does this look okay? And Monica says, yeah, everyone's waiting for you, Kendra. And then Kendra comes down and then they play the trumpets and the fake cheers, which I hate that they do that. Like they're celebrating that she's finally made They're like rewarding made it. her for being late. It's annoying. Mm-hmm. And then um, Hef says, oh, Little Miss Laker. And Kendra says, yep, it's the playoffs. So she's already being defensive. Mm-hmm. Like that's all the comment that was made is Hef just comments Little Miss Laker yeah but she's defensive (laughs) oh and did you notice because i've made this comment a long long time ago a million years ago archie is down by my feet and i've i've pointed this out before i feel like he's always near me yeah he is and i never realized it at the time but watching all these back like all these scenes he's like always like right behind me or right up right by my feet or maybe he's a spirit guide <laughs> maybe he could be, you never know and then in interview you say Kendra wasn't really dressed up she was wearing a Lakers jersey and I think she wore that because she wanted everyone to know that she would rather be watching the game I just want to say I hate this interview because it's the one I talked about last episode where I have like the bleached out eyebrows so I look really harsh and I feel like me saying that comes off more harsh than it is but they were the show was pushing for it too like they yeah. wanted that to be the drama Kendra mm-hmm. showing up up in a Lakers jersey and like no one gives a fuck what she's wearing what I give a fuck about is the attitude she wanted everybody to know she'd rather be at the Lakers game and like why are we focusing on this and celebrating it right and then the next scene an interview I say I was really excited to go to Geisha House to get the slumber party started I have a question was Geisha House the only restaurant we were approved to shoot at in LA at this point because obviously when we travel we're shown eating at other restaurants like I wonder if Kara picked Geisha House or if that was just the one place LA that lets us film (laughs) yeah it could be so we're inside Geisha House. We're all enjoying our time. Everyone's smiling, laughing. I'm a You're, walrus. Yes. I see memes of that and gifts of that all the time. Really? Yeah. That's so um, funny. I wish Geisha House still existed because I'd say let's take a field trip there. Yeah, because it was good. It's an escape room now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, you ding your, your chopsticks on the glass and say that you you have a moment for everybody. Yeah, I was super excited to give Kara the Playmate of the Year necklace because I always thought Playmate of the Year should have like a special necklace. Yeah. Yeah. So I had it, uh, you know, with our jewelry licensee designed like a bigger bunny. It was platinum with diamonds and like a pink sapphire eye, pink sapphire bow tie. And eventually they would sell like a costume version of it just in stores or whatever. But there were only eight real diamond ones ever made. So they're kind of like horcruxes or infinity Rare. stones. Yeah. yeah. There was Kara and Sarah Jade. And then I got them for Carmela, Tiffany Fallon, and then me, you and Kendra. So there's only eight in existence that's amazing and you say it was a really great feeling to know that the idea of a playmate of the year necklace went over so well and hopes it becomes a tradition i highly doubt they did it after i left though yeah highly doubt yeah i don't think so um i wanted to say i'm laughing at myself because i'm talking about how i designed this necklace and yeah i did like i came up with the concept but it's just funny to hear me say i designed it when it's just like a bunny logo like it's not like a like the specifications of it are just different like it's bigger it has like the pink eye and the pink bow tie but it's not I was just laughing at myself because it's not really like a design and right. like, I designed it well you got to take your your rewards when you can yeah because nobody else in that world was ever going to give you credit for anything no. so you have to blow up your own shit yeah in an interview Kendra says it's it's so cool it's so beautiful and care deserve it where's mine <sighs> I would give her one later, but damn, can somebody else have a minute? Yeah. Okay, so then the next scene, we walk into the Playmate house, and I say it looks so cool, referring to all the decorations that we did earlier, and we're all in the bedroom, like the master bedroom, and Hef says, you guys know this is the original vibrating, rotating bed from the Chicago mansion, and I'm like, I 
never knew it vibrated. Me either. Like, did it just not work so it never, like, sunk into our heads that that's what it did? Because he says it twice so far on the show. Yeah. But I don't remember that. I mean, I take his word for it. I it do, must too. Have, but it must have been, like, broken by the time anybody was ever on it, so we just didn't remember that that was a feature. Yeah. I. It's so bizarre to me. <laughs> like, since when did it vibrate and then it shows a bunch of b-roll of us just like having fun at the party and this was more lively and more fun than like the barbecue I tried to have at the playmate house last season but it's still not as fun as I think it would be if we were like unsupervised because still it's like we all know we're being filmed nobody wants to get too crazy or too candid or too relaxed and most of the people at the this party are not used to being filmed 24 7 like we are right so it's still a little stunted like it's more fun than that barbecue but it's still kind of stunted yeah well somebody asks does the bed still work and the next thing you know we're all crammed on it Mm -hmm. and we're taking it for a spin um and in commentary kendra talks about how hyper and drunk she was in this scene which i bring that up because it matters later. Okay. And then in commentary, you talk about the Playmate of the Year shots that you made and that they and we were talking about how gross they were. And I don't remember what they were, but you say they had milk in them? Well, I think it was like Playboy had done an article about like these really cool shots, like a bartending article. And one of them was called the Playmate of the Year. And it was like pretty to look at in the picture. So I thought, oh, well, those are going to be the shots we serve at the Playmate of the Year party, of course. But I guess they turned out gross. I don't yeah. remember. It was I don't like remember raspberry. them with milk or something because they wanted it to be pink because pink in case we haven't told you guys is like the theme color for playmate of the year like everything at the luncheon was pink yeah back in the day in the 60s the prizes used to be pink and and then you say let's do gift bags they still do gift bags i remember back in the 2000s like i was so impressed with gift bags when i first got to go to cool parties because i'd never got a good gift bag before and everybody loved gift bags at parties and it was such cool swag but then for a while there was kind of a backlash to them like people thought it was just like handing out a bunch of junk that nobody really wanted and what a waste although I will say back when I first started going to parties when I first moved into the mansion some of the gift bags were good like one party we went to the actual bag itself was like a Burberry tote and it had like all this really good makeup and shit in it but then there was kind of like a backlash to gift bags and I don't like go to events really or things anymore too much so I don't know are gift bags still a thing are they still good do people still covet gift bags Uh, well I do know that I saw that the the Oscars are still doing like gift bags. Yeah, I and think the, they still do for like the nominees and stuff. They do like the Emmy ones and the Oscar ones. Because I saw like the that. price tag on them was like half a million dollars yeah, or something crazy like, like, like that. Vouchers for these trips that nobody uses and stuff like that. Yeah, but I don't know about regular at regular events because I feel like I don't go to anything anymore yeah, either. It's interesting. It was a very two thousands thing. So I made these gift bags and they all had like a Paris Hilton tiara in it because that was very much a thing back then. Do you remember? that cover I don't remember if it was like Cosmo Girl or Teen People or whatever it was but it was very much of the time and it was like Kelly Osborne and Mandy Moore and they both had tiaras and one said Kelly and one said Mandy but they like switched it no I don't remember that's what I think of when I think of 2000s tiaras that in Paris Hilton <laughs> but anyway we had the princess tiaras because Kara's whole thing was princess themed mm-hmm. had like tube socks all my merch Playboy jewelry, pajamas. There was a bunch of goodies in there. Yeah. The onesie pajamas were really cute. They were so cute. Pajamas. They were really cute, especially for this episode and stuff. Trisha Paytas made a whole, um, I think I told you about this. She, a couple years ago, she made like a whole merch line for, um, she called it sad boy because it was like emo. It was like emo mixed with girls next door kind of style and it was like hoodies that kind of looked like the Playboy hoodies, but they said sad boy. And then there was like onesie pajamas, but it had like a different logo. Oh. I love how they put a fake tiara on you with a with a bling. I love when they do the animation and stuff like that. It's so cute. It shows me the pajamas and my butt is hanging out of the drop drawer. I love the drop drawers. <laughs> the too. drop drawers are cute. And you said you wanted to get custom onesie pajamas made, but these worked out. I thought they were really cute anyway. Mm-hmm. And then you say, Is it time for Kara's presence? And we all cheer, yeah. And then the record scratches. Yeah, and then Kendra screens, wait a minute. I need to go get my stuff. And this reminds me of dialing it back to the San Diego episode when you pointed out that Kendra and her mom are both really good at making drama out of nothing. Like when Patty stops and kind of freaks out because she's like missing a napkin. Yeah. This is another one of those things where it's all very like record scratch for the camera. Stop. Big gesture. 
I forgot mine or I don't have mine or whatever it was. And it's very for the show because I feel like if the cameras weren't around, nobody would have even noticed that there wasn't a gift from Kendra in the piles of gifts or if Kendra said oh I left mine at home I'll give it to you tomorrow nobody would have cared that would have been fine yeah but because it's the show and she sees an opportunity to get the fuck out of there and not just get the fuck out of there but steal one of the camera crews with her and make it the Kendra and Monica show yeah she's gonna run with that yeah and you say we'll just call somebody and have them bring it over because there's butlers and yeah, security totally. that will totally walk it over and Kendra says uh yeah but oh, f- oh wait for a little bit and then like it doesn't even make sense she was like Kendra says she had to go back to the mansion and get her present Monica needed to get her present too so Monica and I drove over to the house stole the car but she just talked about how drunk she is in this scene and she jumps in the car. Yeah. And granted, she's only kind of going across the street, but still there could have been a pedestrian she didn't see. Like, I just don't. It's just not a good look. Like, yeah, they, I don't have any sympathy for that. I don't give a shit how old you are. And well, technically, I think she's only about to turn 21 next month. So technically, she wasn't even supposed to be drinking. Yeah. Which like I've said before, I don't care. Everybody drinks in like high school or college, but it's just like... The fact that the show thought this was okay. Wow. Yeah, well, and I'm I'm assuming we all thought she was walking over there because she we I would have I assumed she walked over. I had no idea till like we watch it later that they took the car. Yeah. But the car was the car that Hef and Elaine were supposed to be taken back to the mansion in, and then there was no car to take Hef back to the mansion, so they had they ended up having to walk back. Yeah, we found out later Hef had to walk, which is he has a lot of back pain. Like it's not necessarily that easy for him even to do like the across the street walk. So then the next scene shows the mansion at night. Kendra and Mon- Monica have changed and are standing in the upstairs hall. Kendra is saying, we got to go. We got to go. And they're walking down the hall. And Kendra says, should I put sweats on? Like she wants to go change after she already changed once. And Monica says, well, if you're more comfortable. But we had the matching pajamas for them to wear. Because it's not about changing, though. It's about how can she keep the cameras away from what we're doing. I mean, there was two cameras there. So there's one on us and there's one on her. It's all contrived. Yeah. And then in commentary, Kendra says, we were really drunk right here. And also, I got to say, too, like even before she leaves, it genuinely looked like everybody was having a good time at the slumber party. Like it didn't look childish or dumb. I think she just can't take it when she's lost in a sea of hot chicks. And it's not all about her. It's about someone else. Like she doesn't know or at that point in her life, didn't know what to do with that kind of energy. It's like she doesn't know how to take the supporting role. No, not at all. You're 100% right. And then the next scene cuts back to the Playmate house, and we're all sitting on the floor in a circle waiting to open presents. And there's the kitty. I think this has to be that third kitty you were talking about. right. There's a whole other cat. And you say, are Kendra and Monica back yet? And Hef is pissed, you can tell. Mm -hmm. He's like over it. And Hef says, well, we should have sent somebody to go get it. And Holly says, I said that, but she insisted and Hef says yeah and you can tell you can tell he's mad yeah and it's holding everything up and he wants to go and in interview you say Kendra and Monica left the party almost immediately because Kendra forgot her gift at the other house and they were gone for a really long time in commentary I think Kendra says they were gone for almost two hours whoa yeah and you say how long is Kendra going to take and Hef nods his head and says well that's the point we could be sitting here forever so he's yeah I think Hef is eager to go home like he wants to get the quote-unquote official festivities and the camera time over with so he can leave and Kendra's holding that up Mm -hmm. and in commentary Kendra says she did not realize how long they'd been gone because they were so drunk so a third time she says how drunk they were yeah and in an interview I say Hef was really anxious and he wanted to get going on the presents I got Kara a giant throw blanket with her picture of her playboy cover on it but so many people have asked me about it and even currently somebody asked me about it and the company was called woven moments but i looked them up before we did this show and i don't think that they're a company anymore but there are companies that still do the woven blankets yeah it's more of like a known thing now i feel like it was brand new back it then. was totally brand new like nobody'd seen that before <laughs> yeah and then hef and elaine leave and we talk about how elaine was pissed because she thought her and hef were going to take the car back but kendra and monica had taken the car so hef and elaine had to walk back i yell out is anybody gonna go skinny dipping as I I pull off my onesie pajamas and run outside towards the pool you know what I noticed in this and I'm curious if you noticed it too or thought anything of it I feel like I'm being a lot more careful in this scene to not be as naked in front of the camera 
Because like when I walk out there, I'm carrying this giant thing of towels in front of me and then I like dive straight in. And there is a shot later where you can see my body more when we're like running out of the pool. And I guess if I'd really wanted to, I really could have like been a prude and like covered myself with my arms. But I think that was more like the camera's way on the ground. I'm wondering what they're even seeing and we're just racing to get out because it's cold or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like I'm being a little more careful about the nudity now. Not that the nudity doesn't happen. Like obviously they film us doing our second pictorial this season and you can see nudity but I do feel like now that I know that the unblurred nudity is going out there I am being more careful about it yeah I wish I would have been even more careful <laughs> but I am being more careful about yeah it, I'm gonna I pay feel. attention to how it goes from here like how much I I am like more if I'm more careful mm -hmm. or not in an interview, I say I tried to get everyone to go skinny dipping. It shows me on a float in the pool. A couple of people join me. You come out with a basket of towels. I Kendra and Monica pull back up to the Playmate house in the car. Again, they're driving again. Yeah. And then the next scene, Allison comes running into the pool and dives in with her socks. Allison's stomach is so amazing, by the way. Like, how do I get that fit? right <laughs> it's incredible but didn't yeah. you say like a million people were commenting to you about her jumping in with the socks yeah <laughs> and I didn't think anything about it at the time I feel like the whole skinny dipping scene we're doing that because we know the show needs something and it's the only thing because we're living in nine o'clock curfew world can't really go anywhere it's kind of the only quote-unquote borderline edgy thing we can do is like get naked yeah you know what I mean yeah and then does it show us in the hot tub? I want to say about this hot tub. So this hot tub was in the master bedroom at the Playmate house. And there was all this like glass brick around. I hate glass brick, by the way. Yeah, I'm not into it it's either. It's like probably my least favorite architectural feature in the world is glass brick. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so we're in this glass brick pool, glass brick hot tub. And it reminded me that I think after we left, there was some story about how there was like a mold problem at the Playmate house because of that hot tub. Oh, like there was something that messed up familiar. about that hot tub. Yeah. yeah. But you also say in commentary that you think that the previous owners were swingers because they have a, the hot tub in there mm -hmm. and they have a party bathroom. <laughs> yeah, like a cocaine bathroom. I never heard of that before, a party yeah, bathroom. that's a thing. And then you say, I want to play light as a feather, stiff as a board. I have a question for you. Has anyone ever actually lifted someone with light as a feather, stiff as a board? Like, is there a trick to it where you could actually do it? Or is it just like a not a thing? I don't know. But after doing the table tipping in mm -hmm. Canada, I want to try it again. Like if people are serious and really put their thoughts to it, can it happen? Like, is there a weird way to redistribute weight in a way that you think wouldn't be possible, but is? No, it's paranormal. I Normal. No, I don't think light as a feather stiff as a board is a paranormal thing. <laughs> But like, has anybody ever lifted somebody? I don't know. Huh. And then Kendra yells out, let's play charades. And no one seems into it. She tries to sell it again. Like, she's like, you like you know, crazy charades. I don't know what crazy charades is besides charades. Yeah. And then Tiffany says, um, I've never played charades. And somebody else says, me either. I don't think any of us had. Like, I'm surprised she was the one who knew how to play charades. I don't think I've ever, I don't, I vaguely know what charades is supposed to be, but I don't think I've ever played it or know what the rules are. Oh, I played Very charades, but it was weird that Kendra would want to play charades. Yeah. And then, um, and then you decided to do prank calls. <laughs> and you how did Bryant know it was me well it wasn't really Bryant they had Bryant fill in for the scene later oh okay now I know because it was another butler who didn't want to be on camera but did the other butler okay I remember who it was now did he really know it was me I think so damn I'm not slick I don't know how he knew, though. <laughs> I think he must have recognized because, your voice yeah because they get so many prank calls yeah did they have caller ID by that time did they know where it was coming from did they ever get caller ID while we were there? I know they really wanted know. caller ID because they got so many prank calls. Yeah, I'm not sure. But maybe that was why. And you say, I'm going to call the mansion really quick and see if they think I'm a prank. Because the, the phones, you said these phones don't work. So I think it just means like, I think you just meant like the cell phone wouldn't, like they would they didn't have caller ID yeah. basically. And Kendra says, that won't be fun though. And I'm like, watching this back, I'm like, do you think she said it to that though? Or do you think that was like mishmash or like clipped together? Oh, it could have been because I was like, geez. <laughs> and then I say, why don't you go back to the mansion and pout for the rest of the night, you bitch? And then we all start laughing. And I just want to talk about this scene for a second because 
I would never have had the balls. Like, I was not talking to Kendra in this scene. Yeah. Because I would have never have had the balls. I might have been thinking this, but <laughs> I would have never have had the guts to say this to her. But also, you can see in the scene, you're saying it so good-naturedly, and, like, you're smiling and laughing. Like, it was either some other story you were telling, or you were, like, joking to somebody else, and everybody was laughing and thought it was funny. Like, I don't... Like, I'd had a few drinks by this time, so I don't remember exactly what the conversation was, but it's not the way they cut it. Like, you're not telling Kendra go pout about it you bitch right right <laughs> I know but I feel like that's what they're trying to play it off like like yeah like, like I just can't take it anymore and I'm like but we telling her never because we would have known that we would have like been the ones to get in trouble well we not only that that would have ruined the whole night Kendra wouldn't have just laughed about it and thought that was funny she would have been pissed and mm-hmm. said snotty things back and it would have turned into a whole fight like yeah. it would have been a thing so this this is like not even I'm I in my head I'm clearly telling a story about something mm-hmm. and then I'm joking like okay so just go back to the mansion and pout about it then bitch or something yeah. and I'm laughing about it and everybody's laughing so it was part of a bigger story yeah. and joke it was and not else. something I was directing at Kendra but they're trying to make it look like this is like a a a thing like a fight kind of then you call the mansion and Bryant I say that in quotes (laughs) because it wasn't him answers the phone and you say are there naked girls there and Bryant says not here and you said well then you're not Not doing doing your your job job. and we all laugh (laughs) and Holly says do you know who who this is and he says it's Holly and we're all shocked that he knows because seriously, how? Like, I'm not saying I'm like a good actor or anything, but I did disguise my voice and they do get prank calls all the fucking time. Yeah. So how does he know for real? I don't know. <laughs> He's just on to me, I guess. Um, and then in an interview, you say you left the party around 2 a.m. because you wanted to go back in bed with Puffin. Bullshit. Because he earlier that day said, you're not really staying the night over there, are you? And I was like, uh, guess not. It's just dumb. Like, seriously, like, I can't stay the night across the street with cameras on me with all girls. Right. It's just, I'm over it. And watching the scene where I have to leave, like, I can just feel the loneliness behind it. Like, just not getting to stay for the slumber party that was my idea that I set up. And, like, I can't hang out with the girls all night. Everybody else can. Like, I can just feel, like, the heaviness and the loneliness I felt when I, like, had to walk back. Yeah, well, you didn't miss much because the the party was pretty much over and Victoria tells a really bad joke about the stork bringing the babies. I love a good dad joke, though. Like, I know everybody else hates dad jokes, but I'm sitting there laughing. I like dad jokes. Uh Well, so here's the joke in case you haven't seen the scene in a while. A little boy asked his mom, where do babies come from? And she says, the stork brings them. And he said, but who fucks the stork? (laughs) <laughs> and then it's everyone kind of giggles except for Kendra looks confused and says so who did fuck the stork and Victoria waves her off and says just forget it everyone's tired and yeah. not even have the energy to explain it and Kendra doesn't let it go and says can you please tell me who fucked the stork in an interview Kendra says things started to get a little boring so she came up with an idea to toilet paper the neighborhood an interview I say I stayed behind you guys go ahead I think it's interesting you get to see a little bit of our neighborhood especially we just posted like the bonus episode where we talked to Jade Iveen who lived across the street mm-hmm. so one of those houses their toilet papering is probably hers and and they're not really toilet papering the houses because obviously these are all like giant estates behind gates with security cameras. Yeah. So people are kind of like half heartedly tossing a roll of toilet paper over a gate or like a little bit of ivy on a fence or something. But I wouldn't have wanted to go do that either had I been there because I know that, you know, Hef throws these loud parties, these loud giant parties with a lot of traffic five times a year. And it's a privilege to be able to throw those parties without the neighbors getting fucking pissed. And there was always one lady that lived back behind the game house that used to complain all the time. And like, we need to kind of kiss our neighbor's ass. And I think I say that in commentary and Kendra goes, the neighbors can suck my dick. Yeah. Well, and I say I'm not doing it because they're all gated and they all have security cameras and security and stuff like the. Yeah. You're you're not even going to get away with it if you do do it. You know, my question to you is, do you think the camera crew cleaned up that toilet paper after them? My guess is 
the crew, somebody probably went back and like made sure there wasn't really toilet paper on the neighbors' houses. Oh, I because don't know. Because kissing the neighbors' asses was a real thing. Like all the neighbors were invited to the parties. Like, <gasps> like Hef and staff knew that he needed to stay in the neighbors' good graces. Well, there were times we had to ask neighbors to be quiet during interviews too. I remember when I had to do my interviews like behind the game house mm-hmm. for a while. Like there was a neighbor. It was probably the old lady mm-hmm. you were talking about that has like kind of like a short mid-century house. You could kind of see it a little bit. A little, yeah. yeah. And they had her like gardener was there or something, and they were mm-hmm. like weed whacking like right where we're trying to do our interview, and they had to go over and ask if they could do it later. Yeah, like an hour later or mm-hmm. something. And they weren't happy about it, but they yeah. agreed to it. And then somebody lets out of the loudest belch, which I'm like, gross. <laughs> Random. Was it real or a sound effect? No, I think it was real. Oh, my God. That's funny. And somebody says, how in the heck are we going to get to the houses? Which I'm like, exactly. Yeah. And at the first sign of like seeing something or hearing something, Kendra's the first to run and they make all these <laughs> fake siren sounds as they go running down the street and in commentary that's when you talk about we need to be nice to our neighbors and you know because they can complain a lot more than they do and Kendra says fuck our neighbors nice and then the next scene is front of the mansion so we're cutting to playmate of the year a few days later but it kind of makes it look like it's the next morning. it does look like as if like morning. we would never have kept a playmate of the year up at a slumber party or getting drunk before playmate of the year in fact it was notorious that the playmates of the year went to bed early before their lunch yeah. they had to be up early doing press as you can see Kara's out there you know hair and makeup all dressed up posing with her car and they have to questions. do the east coast press so they have to get up super early yeah and playmate of the years couldn't even go to dinner with us the night before yeah like it was crazy they had to be up so early so yeah definitely was not the night before sequestered and then you're looking out my window and then that's when you say it i say i spot i say something like i spy the playmate with the huge tits because because the Playmate of the Year luncheon was kind of like an unofficial Playmate reunion. Mm-hmm. Like who, whatever Playmates could make it back were welcome to come back. And they would all get like high school reunion style name tag stickers as they walked in. And there was this woman who would come every year. She was a Playmate from the 60s. And she had her boobs done so big. It was like... Thing. It was memorable. Yeah. So that's who I'm referring to. <laughs> and then I say, ugh, but I'm not sure that I'm referring to the woman because I don't think I even know the woman. I mean, I'm, I probably yeah. know who you're talking about, but I don't know her personally. Or if I'm referring to like, because I'm doing my hair and makeup in the mirror, so I might be referring to... I think it's more that. Yeah, that's I, the impression I got. How I look or something. I got teary-eyed watching this scene back. And I always say Playmate of the Year feels like a graduation. And for me, it especially did this year. I felt like... Kara's graduating she's leaving us all in the dust I was very much emotional about it I felt like I was being held back in kindergarten and she got to move on to first grade and they're also playing like on the show the graduation yeah, music in the background yeah so it's really like I'm teary-eyed over it just watching it and in commentary I say I cried the most at Carmela's ceremony which is surprising because it only got worse from then on like I remember really crying at like Sarah Underwood's oh yeah this year in 2006 at Kara's I was especially moody because I just kind of felt like my life was stalling and everybody else was moving on well I'm not gonna lie I cried at all of them yeah (laughs) but I I've talked before about how Tiffany Fallon's was really hard for me yeah but it wasn't just all about her playmate of the year it was about like her moving on and all the opportunities she was getting and stuff and I was very jealous yeah (laughs) in a positive way of all of that and like wish that my life was moving in that sort of way too and same but like I definitely felt it at care as you can see I'm totally crying in in this whole thing and and I think she felt it too not in the same way us but she felt like a loss of leaving as well she's also crying and we Mm -hmm. all you know she also feels the friendship and the like family that we had I I wish I would have asked her. I can't. I wonder if she kept the car and the motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Good question. Yeah. I'll have to ask her. And Tiffany Fallon, speaking of, she's there with her new husband, mm-hmm. Joe Don from Rascal Flats. And speaking of that, can we talk about Tiffany's wedding for a second? Because I feel like it very much fits into this theme of like female friendship and loneliness. Yeah. So Tiffany during her Playmate of the Year year, 2005 on to 2006, she got married 
And we were invited to the wedding. And the wedding was in Mexico, but it was on like the Cancun side of Mexico. Like if it was Cabo, that would have been an easy trip because it's very close to California. Wait, I thought it was Cabo. No, it was Cancun. Because oh. that was the deciding factor on why I couldn't go. So Cancun is quite a long flight from L.A., so she invited us and I was trying to figure out how can we go to this and it's a long flight you're going to spend at least a whole day traveling so in order to make it worth it because you're traveling a whole day there and a whole day back I want to stay two days so I would you know arrive the day before get a good night's sleep there'd be the day of the wedding and the reception and then the next day and then you could fly home after that so that yeah. was what I was going to try to do I know you wanted to go I don't remember if Kendra wanted to go or not she was not I don't think she did on the same page it was just you and I like pl making plans or mm -hmm. we thought we were making plans and we thought it would be fun if our trip or tiffany's wedding could be you know filmed for the show and of course kevin wanted like the whole wedding like playmate of the year marries a celebrity of course oh he had full-on meetings with tiffany and joe don about filming their wedding yeah and i remember i got a call from tiffany and she was very upset like almost in tears like i don't want to say what she said but i'm assuming she wanted it to be more about family and about everybody and about her and joe don and not have it be like overshadowed by playboy yeah or know? girls next door like yeah. it's for the show i just think she rightfully so didn't want her wedding to be about that but she was like almost in tears when she was talking to me because I think she was getting so much pressure from Kevin or whoever yeah and it's that cult-like mentality of well you need to be grateful for Hef and you need to hand your whole fucking life over because you got to be playmate of the year kind of a thing which mm -hmm. is bullshit so anyway the show wasn't gonna film but I still thought even though we weren't really supposed to spend a night away I thought of course we're going to be able to go. You know, it's Tiffany. Like, Hef loves Tiffany. Of course he's going to let us go. And he could send security and no big deal. And he was going to let us go. We hadn't exactly negotiated how many days we were going to be away. But I was trying to say that. And I was on the phone with somebody. I don't remember if it was somebody in the office who was arranging the trip or whatever. But Hef walked into the vanity as I, as I was on the phone. I go, no, I need to stay two nights because we need to fly in one night, sleep, go to the wedding and then the party meaning the reception but I said party and Hef all of a sudden like this dark look got on his face and he goes you're not going to any party you're not going to that wedding and like hung the phone up and I was like oh and I was crushed not only because it's jarring to just get like scolded like that out of the blue when your intentions were so innocent like I just wanted to go to a girlfriend's wedding like yeah. there was no plan to like fuck other guys or anything weird while I was there and so that's jarring but also it's just like that sad feeling I had of like I can't have a normal life and I can't hang out with the other girls and it's almost like this carrot on a stick where you're like surrounded by all these fun female friendships but you can't really indulge in those friendships and it was just so like heartbreaking at the time and I just felt like fuck yeah yeah it sucks and then I don't know if we were both nicks from going but I know I didn't want to go if like I had you know couldn't go with you yeah I mean I wanted to go but I'm not gonna go by myself like it's something we wanted to do together and I imagine it was probably discouraging at that point because if I already got nixed from going when we oh, were I wasn't already... even gonna try and yeah because it was already like on the fence like well we don't want to go and then have to turn right back around can we stay two nights instead of one it was kind of like already on the fence anyway and mm -hmm. then after I just got shit on like you don't want to go and try and like lose points by making a big deal out of it yeah so that sucked it really did and especially after like I'd been at the mansion like obviously we know what the rules are at the mansion but other people were allowed to go home and visit their families for like a week at a time and I couldn't even go do that one thing and this was after having been with Hef for almost five years of never doing anything wrong always being the perfect girlfriend and it's like not allowed to earn any trust and it just sucked yeah and they're trying to get us to say in an interview like what it means to us for Playmate of the Year. Like what does it mean? And you say it's a big deal. It's like Miss America but naked. And I say the best way I can describe it or imagine what it feels like to be in her shoes is how I feel when I'm graduating from school or what your wedding day might feel like if your wedding day was only about you. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then the former Playmate of the Year always goes up and does the speech. So that was um, Tiffany. Tiffany. And she did it with Jodon, which yeah. is the first time I've ever seen anything like that, mm-hmm. like where he got up to. But I guess because he's also a celebrity. So yeah, they always wanted to try and get a celebrity MC if they could. And I, I think that was the celebrity MC because other years it was be like Randy Jackson from American Idol or Ryan Seacrest did one year. Yeah, I remember that. I was the celebrity one year after Girls Next Door had been on for so many seasons. <laughs> so they introduce Hef and then Hef gets up and does his speech and he says from Cinderella to Centerfold and I'm already teary eyed. <laughs> Me too and watching it too and then he's reading off the speech and he's talking about what characters she was when she worked at Disney World and I thought it was cute because as he says each name they focus on each one of us they he goes Cinderella and it focuses on me and he says Snow White and it focuses on you and Alice in Wonderland and it focuses on Kendra and I thought those were like good fits for us especially because Alice in Wonderland is more like the childlike like not fussy like not really a princess but if you were a Disney princess which one would you be do you that's think? so funny because you asked me that you told me like I'm uh-huh. gonna ask you that so like be prepared and I was like god I don't know and I was like going through the ones that I'm most familiar with because I'm not really familiar with all the stories and everything and then um I was like I really don't know because I can see parts that I like in yeah. each <laughs> one and then I'm like but I don't know and do you then, have finalists? Well, then I took a test. There's a test online oh, that tells you what Disney princess you are. I want to see if it adds up with what I think you are. Well, I took the test and it came up as Snow White. Well, that's interesting because they had you as Snow White. On yeah, this. But, but that's not who I would have picked. But I want to hear who you okay, would have picked. Well, I would pick Cinderella and not because of your Cinderella cosplay, though that could factor in. <laughs> but when I think of Cinderella, I think of the scenes where she's like really crafty and she's like sewing her own dress and it's that pink dress with all the bows and she's making the outfits for the little animals and stuff like that. So I see her as very crafty and very hyper feminine. So that's why I picked. I 100% pick Cinderella as the one that I just thought of. But yeah. I was like, I don't know. And then I start thinking of other characteristics and other princesses that I liked. But Cinderella was what came to my mind as well. But then the test told me Snow White. And then I had Nick take the test uh-huh. for me. Like, what would you answer yeah. if you were answering these for me? And it came up Jasmine interesting what about you well I love Elsa she's my favorite but she didn't even exist back in this time period um I feel like like the core of who I am I identify with Belle the most because she's like a bookworm and she always feels like out of place and like not into small town life and always wants something bigger like I feel like I'm kind of Belle but I feel like as far as how I come off in the show I'm for sure Sleeping Beauty because Sleeping Beauty out of all the princesses she has the least screen time in her own movie she says the least because she's asleep for half of it I'm a very tired Um, chronic fatigue person I always have been since I was a teenager and out of all the Disney princess cosplays I've done I think people like remember the Sleeping Beauty one from the Renaissance Fair yeah so I would pick Aurora as far as I am in the show but then I was thinking about Sleeping Beauty and also how much Kevin the producer loves Sleeping Beauty because that was the first color film he ever saw as a kid and it made an impression he collects the stuff and stuff like that remember how before I said that I feel like he kind of coded us like Alvin and the Chipmunks Mm -hmm. but I also feel like we're kind of coded as the three fairies like I'm Flora the one in red because she's kind of like you know thought of as like one in charge or whatever which I don't know that I necessarily was the one in charge but I was supposed to be the main girlfriend and then Fauna's you because you're like the peace Peacekeeper. And then Kendra is Meriwether because Meriwether was always like the feisty one who didn't want to do what everybody else was doing and was always wanting to start fights and stuff like that. And I feel like I feel like we're kind of coded as the three fairies, like whether he realized he was doing that or not, we're kind of coded that way. And I also wanted to ask you how you felt about this because I feel like on the show and in the media, you were always portrayed as like the peacekeeper or like Switzerland mm-hmm. or like the one that was in between me and Kendra and I wondered if you felt like that was accurate because I feel like it's accurate to a point where like you're always trying to include everybody like in the scene with where you go to room four with Kendra and Monica but I always felt like it was you and I that were really friends and we always tried to include Kendra it didn't necessarily work but I always felt like when you and I were frustrated with the situation when Kendra was treated differently than us and stuff we were very much on the same page I didn't yeah. feel like it was like Kendra and I hated each other and then you were Switzerland but I feel like that's how it was always portrayed both on the show and in the media when people would like leak stuff <laughs> yeah I think it's a little bit of both because I feel like definitely we were always on the same page and we both saw the same things Mm -hmm. that were going on I mean obviously I'm talking about all this stuff here 
Um, but I feel like there was times where Kendra and I did bond and were close and not that that meant anything against our relationship mm-hmm. or that I didn't still see the things that were going on but I felt like um there were times where I was legitimately friends with her mm-hmm. and there were things that there were some things that you guys fought about after the fact that I wasn't involved in I remember specifically yeah. things that I was like on my like I was in a different country mm-hmm. and there there would be like press or people yeah. you know contacting me about like oh Kendra said this about Holly and what do you think about that or whatever and I'm just like no comment like I'm not responding to that kind of stuff like I'm friends with everybody and like so I so I feel like yes I saved this I had the same frustrations that you did yeah. at the mansion and I did feel that there was unfair treatment and stuff but I did feel like after the fact that there were definitely things that I was not involved in and do you think that was a case of fake drama turning into real drama? Because I feel like while we were there, we both kind of had this like up and down relationship with Kendra and we both had our own like individual blowouts with Kendra. But the, but it was always portrayed as like, no, Kendra and Holly don't like each other and like Bridget's the peacekeeper. But then when we go out into the real world on the spinoffs, that's really how it is kind of. Not that you're trying to like peacekeep or bridge a gap or being like holly you know you need to go talk to kendra but no it's kind of like i don't know another i feel like it between like me and her hating each other it's another like fake drama turning into real drama well and for the longest time i did kind of stay in contact with her up Mm -hmm. until like relatively recently i felt like i could just text her if i need to know something even as recently as the a and e documentary coming out and stuff um talking to her about whether she was going to participate or if they'd reached out or whatever so I feel like I always did stay on at least you know cordial terms with her it's not like we were going out and hanging out or anything like that but I felt like I I could but there were I also don't pay attention to all of the media and the press and I didn't realize like the thing that she how ugly it was yeah (laughs) the thing she went and did with Kevin and talking shit about us like I had no idea that even was out there until I found out later and so um and I'd never read her book and so Mm -hmm. finding out some of the things that she said about me and that so now it's sort of opening my my eyes to was was she really a friend and and you know yeah new things yeah it's crazy but I could see how people would would consider that Switzerland, you know, like yeah, for sure. Um, and I think people want it to be like I think people who watch the show they want us to all come together at some point, you know. Yeah. Oh, I think so too. I get messages about that all the time. Yeah. But I think that they're also thinking only about this drama that happened at the mansion and how we should just put this behind us because we were all manipulated by Hef or the situation yeah. or whatever. And that I agree with. Like, we only talk about it now because, like I said, we're going back in time. Right. We're, we're talking about what's happening in this episode, so it's pertinent. But I don't walk around today being like, you know what? Fuck Kendra. She didn't want to do the slumber party. Like, I <laughs> yeah. do not give a shit. Right. It's all about later stuff that has led to, like, right. us not speaking. Well, that's what I was just going to say. It's the things that happened after we left the mansion mm-hmm. that are the most hurtful and things that happened like when we are completely minding our own business and doing nothing else and they're just trying to drum up publicity for her show and stuff and trying to throw us under the bus and like say hurtful mean things about us way after the fact Mm -hmm, I mean sure years and years and years after the fact so I don't appreciate any of that and I I feel like that's sort of harder to forgive now it is so But back into the scene, yeah. <laughs> Kareth gets up on the stage and she thanks us all for being so welcoming to her, which I really appreciate that that's in here too because I feel like finally like we, but especially you, are getting like a little bit of recognition for being so warm and welcoming to the playmates that come in and the girls that come to the mansion. Yeah, that's nice. That feels very good. Yeah, she said, thank you for befriending me and making her feel part of the family. Because I feel like that's so much what we were trying to do. Yeah, totally. And she says how much she loves us and that we're making her cry. And then I I just, I feel like she was almost thanking us more than she was even thanking Hef. Like we made a bigger impact on her life than even Hef did. Yeah. Is the way I felt the yeah. scene was kind of going. And then she does think half though. And she says after um, three years of brunettes, it was time for a blonde because mm-hmm. it was um, 
Tiffany, Carmela, and Christina. Yes. Yeah. And then um, in interview, I say Kara's Playmate Luncheon was beautiful. It was one of the neatest ones I've been to. It was a really beautiful day. And in interview, you say the luncheon was an amazing day for Kara, but it was a sad day for, for Kendra because Monica was going back home to New York. And I felt like that little snippet scene was a bit overblown. I think so Like too. Monica had been there for three weeks. We all love Monica. Really fun. But it wasn't like... They, they're almost playing it off like she was a girlfriend, but it didn't work out. Wow, life has been forever changed. Or like that somehow Monica was going to stay forever. Like it yeah. was always the plan that she was going to leave bef- right after Playmate of the Year. It wasn't like mm-hmm. um, that was one of the reasons she was in town. Yeah. So so it's, it's just dramatized, I feel. Yeah, it was kind of like a f- fake scene. And they d- either way, they don't give anybody... Kara or Monica enough camera time to give it the weight it needs when we're doing this goodbye scene that's what I felt like too I feel like no one no one really cares about Mon. I mean not I mean not I'm not talking about us I'm talking about the people watching the show no one really cares whether Monica's staying or going because we don't know her well enough no she's only featured as Kendra's sidekick yeah yeah, that, I was Nobody thinking knows that anything same about thing. Her. I'm like, they're trying. Kendra says, "Oh, do you want me to cry right now? Is that what you want me to do?" And Monica says, "It's not a big deal. It's better this way." And um, and and I'm just thinking the audience doesn't have that same feeling mm-hmm. in this because they never got to know her. Yeah, it's like this forced thing where they're trying to make it like this sad goodbye and nobody cares. <laughs> and do you think that, and maybe maybe not because maybe it all came out afterwards, but do you think that Monica kind of saw the way she was being kind of used in this show and felt a little bit like uncomfortable and sort of responsible for like some of Kendra's behavior and actions? Because I got that feeling. That's a good question. I don't know so much about the show because I feel like you'd really have to see the cut maybe to well, know. I feel but, like, no, but not, not the cut mm-hmm. after, but sort of the way the show was pushing things. Yeah, and just, I mean, I feel like if you would have been one of those Kendra sidekicks, it would have been hard not to feel the vibe that Kendra was very much trying to like drive a wedge between her sidekick and us. Like she wanted it to be her and the sidekick. And nothing else. And I feel like that would have been awkward for whoever the sidekick was. Because especially with Monica, I felt like we were all friends with everybody. Well, I felt like it was especially true with Monica. That's Mm -hmm. why I put it in here. Because I felt that from her. Mm -hmm. And she was too nice to ever, like, say something. But I felt that she felt that I could be wrong I think you're right I know what you mean and and the, what she says in here is she tells Kendra it's not a big deal it's better and I feel like she's saying that because it's better because it's causing friction me being yeah. here I I don't know why she said it's better but that's, yeah, that's my read me reading into it that's what I yeah. feel like she's saying I didn't pick up on that that's interesting and then in interview Kendra says girls come and go from the mansion but at the end of the day I always have Holly and Bridget how hard do you think that was for her to spit out <laughs> I mean, clearly it's a fed line, but I feel like she would have never like said that and meant it on her own. (laughs) And then it shows us all in the um, dining room playing dominoes with Hef. Did you hear in commentary where I said that there a rumor had come out? That yes, Hef, that's my next thing. Yes, Hef enjoys dominoes more than sex, which just sounds kind of funny. But Hef in real life was so bothered by that rumor and so mad at it. And I probably told this story before, but... He was somebody who'd been in the public eye at this point for 50 years, been a really controversial figure. People were saying all kinds of shit about him. It didn't really seem to get under his skin. People could say the worst shit about him didn't really seem to get under his skin. But what would get under his skin is if people would question whether or not at age 75 or 80 at this point, he's actually still having sex. He would get so angry. And he was having sex. So you'd think he'd just be secure in the fact that it was happening and just laugh it off and giggle. But no, he was pissed if anybody even dared suggest that he wasn't actually having sex he was triggered yeah hard that's funny and Hef says it was a really lovely day and that was the end of the thing best and worst um well I mean my worst is definitely the whole rift with Kendra Yeah, my worst is just the fact that the intention of this episode was that it was supposed to be all about Kara and it wasn't about Kara at all it was just those same 
rehashed scenes of Kendra doesn't want to do it Mm -hmm. you know it just adds nothing but I will say like I said before the show does get it right later in seasons three and four they do different types of episodes whether it's the 55th anniversary search or the episode where Sarah finds out she gets playmate of the year next year Mm -hmm. or the episode where I bring four girls to the studio which one gets playmate they do a great job on those shows of getting to know who the candidates are I feel but this first one was a fail (laughs) <laughs> yeah. My best for me is just celebrating Kara, all the girl time, and genuinely being supportive of other women. Yeah, I agree. My favorites of this episode are just the excitement of Kara and Playmate of the Year. Even like the Playmate of the Year necklace plays into that because I just always feel like just the pomp and circumstance and the prizes of Playmate of the Year. It's all so fun and special, and I just love that. And yeah. just every, everything Kara, Playmate of the Year, the necklace... I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, uh, was it a good episode? Like, I like when I end on the positive of like, Kara and Playmate of the Year. Oh, it was a good episode. But then I think, no, that episode was kind of a fail. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't, I didn't love that episode. I don't think that it did what it needed to do. And I think it just played into old stereotypes. Yeah, it was kind of like a throwback to everything I don't like about season one, kind Mm. of. It felt very season one. But the good news is, I think they learned from it and better episodes came later that were along these lines. It's funny, when we're doing commentary, we're calling out the producer on a lot of the things. Yeah, too. and he just stays silent on the other end. <laughs> or he laughs, laughs it off. But they were good notes because they do come back with stronger versions of this episode later. So yeah. good job. If you want more content, go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel and we will be back to you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.